Good evening, popular astronomers. It's Tuesday night, uh, the 26th of October, 2021, and it's time for Pop Astro Live. We're going to play the countdown uh, while people join the feed. And please start sharing the video because it helps with our algorithms immensely. So here we go. Good evening, popular astronomers. Welcome to Pop Astro Live. And I am joined by this chap here who doesn't have a name yet. Um, but uh, I'm in a new location tonight. I'm in the same building, but just I've got a lot more desk space, which means rather than being crammed away on a little desk, I've got room in front of my computer, which means I can put things again like my microphone. That never used to make an appearance for the past couple of months. And this thing that I have recently purchased, which we've had to bring him in from the garden because it was windy and he might have bashed his head on the rocks. And just right at the last minute, I thought I'd put a hat on him. Look how funky he is. Let's have a look. Um, can I show you the full thing? Look at that. I'm sorry. That is just so good. Oh, come on. Look, I'm wearing the works for you tonight, popular astronomers. Well, holy God, you have got such a chiseled jaw. You've got, do you work out, bro? Do you work out, bro? That is a, he did not skip jaw day, did he? Or nose day by the look of it. Hey, the comments are flooding in. Good evening, Vicky. Bob, you're 82 now. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Bob. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> I didn't know he spoke in that voice. Good evening, Vicky and everyone. Reminds me. <laughs> Hi, Sonia. How's the uh, observing forecast looking uh, this week? Uh, hi, Ian. Oh, gosh, it's all so small on my screen. Need to pull closer. Uh, good evening, everybody. Evening, everybody. If you are joining the stream for the first time, welcome to Pop Astro Live. This is the fun astronomy show. Oh, he's got a little hole. What lives up there? Oh, no, I forgot Johnny put soil in it to weigh it down. Well, there's a big trail of destruction left around the whole place. I wonder why he's had, like, powder falling out of him. Anyway, that's the first fail of the show. I wonder how many more we can have. Oh, what the hell now? I'll just be sitting in a big pile of sand anyway. Uh, thank you all for your lovely comments. If you are new to Pop Astro Live, um, welcome. And um, just type a comment. And if I deem it worthy enough, or there's a quiet moment in the show where I need to fill time. I will make your comment pop up like magic. And trust me, it rewards. It's, it, it has some serious dopamine attached to it, having your comments pop up on screen. For instance, Bartek uh, was new with us last week. Good evening, Vicky. I'm here as I promised. I just had my first dose of vaccine, so it's a nice thing to watch and not think about the vaccine too much. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. I uh, hope your arm isn't too sore and you're not too poorly. Mr. Rapper, oh, it's too far away. Come, you have to come closer. Can't read the tiny little font. Let me just have a shuffle of my windows. Right, okay. Let's get down to some serious fun. This is Pop Astro Live. Plug the mug, plug the mug, plug. This could be my new teddy bear. Uh, plug the mug, plug the mug. Pl oh, Sonia still can't smell or taste. Well, it's a good job. There's now in the mug then, love. Um, please purchase Christmas presents early to avoid price hikes from the popastro.com shop. And this is just a very small selection. This is a 1% of what you will find in the shop. And like a snake being put, charmed from a basket, in the mug, we've also got this beautiful Anna Lemon necklace, which I have wore a lot of, but it clashes currently with my Silver Star necklace, which is not available from the shop. Um, it's mine. Model's own. Model's own. 
So what have we got going on on the show, on tonight's show? We have got Brian Jones, astronomy author. The big project in his life has been taking over the annual yearbook of astronomy that Sir Patrick Moore began began in the 60s. The latest edition, 2022, is in its 60th anniversary edition. So that's good news. Um, Society of the Week is Macclesfield Astronomy, also known as Macastro, who up until lockdown... And a very lovely conversation I had with Mr. Steve. You're getting heavy on me now. With Mr. Steve Warbis, um, we reckon, or he reckons, that Mac Astro might have one of the... I think I might turn the disco light off for now. Do you mind if I turn off the flashing light? It, it's not meant to be flashing, but the remote control is gone. So, oh, that's better. It's starting to look a bit more sensible now. Um, yeah, Mac Astro have got an incredibly busy outreach schedule or they did until a lockdown locked us all down so we're going to be speaking to martin and liz from macastro cosmo the sloth is back on terra firma do you remember he wasn't with us last week um he has been uh, away somewhere and towards the end we're all going to try and guess where that naughty little sloth has been how is your week Ah, uh, oh, thank you. Somebody's paying him to say all this stuff. Got the SPA mag this week, well worth £25. Yeah, per year. We'll talk about the mag lately, later on, because it's going to get its own little feature on the show. It's so special. And uh, I'll tell you about my naughty address, Jape. Naughty address, Jape. Can you see what it says? <laughs> Naughty address, Jape. Hope you're feeling better, Sonia. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, okay. We're now going to go over to Brian Jones, who is waiting patiently for us in Bradford. Hiya, Brian. Greetings. Hey, thanks so much for coming on the show. How are you tonight? Uh, okay, I think. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think of my co-host? You've just come up with a great name for him. It might stick, you know. Yeah, Eddie. <laughs> and why, Eddie? Oh. There you go. Somebody else might better come up with something a bit different. I don't know. Hedy might be his middle name. Um, yeah, also, this this beast has not got a name. Uh, Moai, uh, I think uh, you might pronounce it, the Easter Island ancestors' heads. Um, so I thought of calling it after my dad, but that's just not right. So tell us all about yourself and why you are on the show tonight, please, Brian. Well, I'm on to promote the Yearbook of Astronomy, um, in particular the 2022 edition, which was published a few weeks ago. And it's the um, it's the Diamond Jubilee of a of a Diamond Jubilee edition of a book that was threatened to go out of existence in 2016. But uh, I, with a bit of luck and some help from uh, Richard Pearson of Nottingham, um, I was able to uh, pull it round produce uh, an issue for 2017 which kept the run going which was continuous from 20, uh, 1962 and then i found a publisher pen and sword in barnsley uh, which is in the same counties here and they took the yearbook of astronomy on for the 2018 edition and they've been with it ever since so, so then, yeah um so the, the would you just like to hold up the book so people know what we're referencing and give us a oh, little yes. leaf um, through? Right. Well, actually, first of all, I'll hold up the very first edition. That's 1962. Uh, that's okay on the screen. Can everybody see that? Yeah, we see. It's great. Great. Now, the 2022 edition has got exactly the same photograph on the front cover. It seemed like a good idea to have the same image as shown on the original issue on the to put that on the Diamond Jubilee edition. It seemed a nice touch. And I managed to get the photograph from the Carnegie Institute in, um, in America, who hold the copyright for it. The picture itself was originally taken in 1919 at Mount Wilson. And... Um, it is available, and so I managed to get hold of a high-resolution copy, and now it graces the front cover of the Diamond Jubilee edition of the yearbook. So um, that's uh, that's that's where the picture comes from. 
but the yearbook itself it contains articles from a number of well lots of contributors each copy of the yearbook has around 10 full-length articles but in addition to that there's a short article with every one of the monthly sky notes sections so there are over 20 articles in every yearbook which makes the difference between this and any other annual sky guide in that people want back issues because of the articles and there are people out there that i'm trying to think of a hobby name for them yearbookologists or something who try and collect a full run from 1962 and it's a formidable task i know one or two people have got full sets and i managed to get my full set completed a few months ago but i had to buy another complete collection to get the one issue that i wanted but i did and so that's it um but in this edition we've got the astronomer royal he's written an article um david levy he's written an article Ooh. um claire sherrod from america he's written a beautiful article on the um native american astronomy and there are lots of other articles in here all of which um have received plaudits so far hey do so, you know actually I, it's um apparently it's the magic distillation of creativity is to be one quarter native american and that's what i am my dad's dad was full-blooded and you know i know nothing about their myths actually i've never even crossed my mind to figure out what what goes on in that area yeah well um some of the people listening in now may well know of the facebook group the arkansas observatory okay. and uh, claire sherrod actually runs that particular group and he's got a fascination and a real in-depth knowledge of native american astronomy and is the article in this one is the first one in a series of three um the next one will be in the 2024 and then the 2025 and between them it'll be a full history of native american astronomy but this one um sort of kicks the series off there is also um an article by martin braddock which is um one in a series of articles giving the countdown for preparation for the first um mission if you like manned mission to mars it's all the preparations that are underway and each article contains a separate subject for example um the buildings how we'll build construct places to live on mars um, how we'll take food with us so on and so forth so that's an ongoing series and if anybody i don't know how many people who are listening now are actually readers of the yearbook of astronomy it would be interesting to get a bit of feedback if anybody wants to send in a quick message because it's always good to know how big your market is um so does anybody listening to this actually get the yearbook well ah. Rob, robin robin has got the 1962 edition maybe he's kept up to date with it Rob, robin will be a critical oh, observer of your book, i'm robin, sure yes. oh god i haven't met him for 30 years uh, I'll, I'll he's not robin, changed much he's not yeah, changed yeah. <laughs> i think the last time i met robin was in i'm going from memory it was tottenham court road in about 1986 and i met him it was something to do with oh hang on a minute uh, the Society for Popular Astronomy newsletter. But uh, anyway, you can buy it if you type in, you can buy it from Amazon. Do you remember or, what he was wearing on that day? You've gotten a very acute memory there. Oh, it's just, I, I used to have frequent trips to London to, to sort of pick up work to do on a freelance basis. And on one of those trips, um, I met Robin. So nice, I, nice, I just nice. don't forget these. Um, I mean, yeah, so it's just, you know, just one of those things. Um, but anyway, Ian Baker has asked, where can we buy it? Well, you can buy it from Amazon. So that, that's fairly straightforward. Or um, you can buy it from um, the publishers, Pen and Sword. Um, oh, what's this? That sounds very Yorkshire, lad, just like me. I like David Graham. Um, anyway, so yeah, you can buy it from the Pen and Sword um, website. If anybody wants a link to the ordering site direct from the publisher, um, you can get it slightly cheaper there um, at a special price. And if you buy three copies, you know, in other words, if a couple of your friends want them, it's postage paid. So um, if anybody wants to contact me, um, they can do. Just look up my Facebook group page, uh, Starlight Nights. 
and then you can send me a message. I'll be on there somewhere. You can just send me a personal message and I can send you a link to the pen and sword ordering page. And if you're in America, um, you can order it from Casemate. So I can send you a link to that site if you're actually up at the other side of the pond. Great. So, um, so there you go. Uh, hey, but, so how did you end up taking over the yearbook then? Well, it was, to be honest, the 2016 edition, um, I was told towards the end of 2016 that the yearbook had been discontinued. And I just thought, this can't be right. You know, it's been going over half a century. And then uh, Richard Pearson confirmed it to me. And so between us, we sort of got this. I had this idea to do a 2017 edition self-published because it was too late for a publisher to print a 2017 edition because it has to be out before the end of 2016. So, um, so we produced the 2017 edition, which is this one. And it's a lot thinner than the yearbook, but it follows the yearbook style. And it means that there is not a missing date for 2017. Mm. And then the 2018 edition, that was commissioned by Pen and Sword. And it's just gone on from then, from strength to strength. Uh, so, yes, but we couldn't have missing dates. You know, I'm, I'm intrigued I mean, to, can you give us a, could you give us a little leaf through this year's yearbook, please? So our astronomers, our popular astronomers can um get into their heads what you've got i'll remove myself right. from the stream and you can just give us a close-up well i'll tell you what i've got the contents list here so um oh yes alan chapman has done an article on a history of the amateur astronomy society over the past 60 years uh martin reese has done expanding cosmic horizons um, Lynn Marie Stockman, who does the monthly sky notes, which are actually brilliantly written. She's also done an article on the astronomers stars. And these are stars named after individual astronomers. So it's in detail. Look at special stars. Um, we've got yearbook regular contributor David Harlan from Glasgow. He's written a wonderful article on Frank D Drake and his equation. Um, Damien Peach has got an article in there on remote observing and imaging. Um, we've got uh, Claire Sherrod's article, Skies Over Ancient America. That's the Native American astronomy. Um, David Harper, who does the star charts for the yearbook, he's written an article on Tycho Brahe and the parallax of Mars. And then we've got an article by Gary Yule on the search for two antique telescopes. Um, owned by astronomers of the past and the results of those searches. Um, we have Martin Braddock's article, uh, Mission to Mars. Um, we've got David Levy. His article is called Ad Astra, A Personal Journey. And that's the story of how he got into astronomy and how it's gone on from right up to the time with, with the shoemakers. He discovered Shoemaker Levy, the one that crashed into Jupiter. And then we've got an article which is sadly topical by Bob Mison on internet satellites, less welcome constellations. And that's the plague of um, mega constellations, the satellites that have been put up in their scores to um, blight the night sky. I just, I, just, I, I just clicked on myself to add myself to the stream and I didn't realize I was pulling such a face when you were talking about the constellations. Yeah. Oh, don't worry about it. That's that face is obviously full of enthusiasm. But no, so, well, um, for, for those artificial constellations, no. Yeah, I but I'm enjoying loving. Can you sh open it up and show us what what format it's in, please? Yeah, the format is the same as it's been for the last sixty years. Um, just look at oh, here we are. Just looking at one of the shorter articles. This is an article on American coins depicted astronomical themes. Oh and wow! It's, you know, it, it's. The size of the yearbook is the same as it's always been. Otherwise, it won't sit well on the shelf. You know, um, I think it's a little bit wider, but it's the same height. And so when they're on the shelf, they all fit together beautifully. I want to see um, it. Leave through it. I want it. you to hold it up and leave through. Does it have all the star maps in it? Oh, yeah, star maps. Let's get to those. Here we are. Star map. One That's step, it. One right. Yeah. That's what it, there's the money shot. Let me just... Um... If I can, oh, that's the way up. And 
We also have, obviously, uh, Neil Norman has written a series of articles, as he does for every issue, on the comets to look out for, meteor showers to look out for, and minor planets to look out for, for during the year. So that's a regular um, feature of the yearbook. And just flicking through the... Oh, that's, that's one of Neil's articles um, about the comets. And, and to be honest... Um, Oh, here we are. Oh, we also have, uh, by Rod Hine, um, an article covering recent advances in astronomical research, as well as one by Peter Ree on recent advances um, in solar system exploration. So these are regular articles bringing the readers up to date with what's going on with space and astronomy exploration. So to be honest, that is a formidable package for the price. And the thing it's got over the other annual sky guides is that the sky guides in this, they're not, I mean, as with the others, they're actually spot on. But it's like I say, a lot of the book is including the articles and it becomes a collectible thing. And it's interesting to know that when you look on Amazon for back issues of this, people are selling them, but people rarely sell back issues of the sky guides that are simply the sky guides for the year because once the year's over there's nothing else in it that's of relevance which doesn't detract from their usefulness but their collectability and their value overall value over time the yearbook basically um what's the expression it kicks ass and that's it you know and to be honest i am totally proud of having my associations with this book because it's like anything else. Okay, John Guy Porter edited the first three. Patrick Moore edited the next 50 years. John Mason took over. Now I've taken over. And hopefully I'm simply looking after it until whenever somebody else takes over. It's like an antique. And it's interesting that it's probably the longest regularly published annual publication of its kind in the world. And it's a British institution. It's not just a yearbook. It's a British institution that had to be saved. And there was no question. It's like buying the Elgin marbles. Dare I make that comparison? Probably not, but I have. <laughs> and, and that's it, you know. So it's, it's just something that should be treasured by amateur astronomers. And by the way, the book itself is totally valid for anywhere on the planet. So it's not wow, written for the Northern Hemisphere. You can be in Antarctica and that would still be relevant. Obviously, not all of the books, some for the North, some for the South, but it, it's all, it should all be, um, it's, it's relevant for the whole planet. And sales are actually going up in New Zealand and Australia, I'm, I'm led to believe. Why so, that? You know, but the thing is, when it comes out, I just try and, I do, hands up, I try and push it as best I can because it's the book itself is worth it and um, speaking of antarctica i think the 2023 edition sorry the 2024 edition uh, which will be published about two years from now will have an article in on astronomy from the antarctic and articles are ready to commission for the next four or five editions of the yearbook because people are queuing up to write for it and it, it's you know it's just absolutely phenomenal and that's why I really want the book to get out there, be bought by amateur astronomers, and I want to see it on their bookshelves. Um, and I'm not biased. And you're not biased now. No, 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 no. no. You, you may have gotten the step, yeah. I'm loving what you're telling us, and um, we seem to have sold a couple of copies for you. So um, I am going to go to my fridge and get myself... Uh, a drink while you talk about because my throat's sore while you talk about the convention oh yes the convention right i shall do that um in a bid to make the yearbook of astronomy more than just the name of a book i've been trying to create if you like a brand name for the book so in other words the yearbook of astronomy is a book but there's also a facebook group there's also a website yearbookofastronomy.com um, there's also an online index available from the website to an author index to every article that's appeared in the yearbook right back to 1962 
and people are finding that of, of interest as well because they are seeking out articles and then trying to buy those back issues if those articles are relevant to their interests but also um, as vicky mentioned there will be um, covid and alien abduction permitting um, next october about a year from now october the 29th the very first yearbook of astronomy convention and it will be held in bradford and tickets can be booked online and it's it's 17 pound 50 for the day and that includes a buffet lunch there is a bar all day as well except during the talks obviously and four um speakers all of whom have appeared in the yearbook that's a stipulation so if this particular convention goes ahead and works then there hopefully will be an annual convention for the yearbook of astronomy mm -hmm. so that's something that i could do with people booking for i know it's a year hence but it's good to get bums on seats well in advance and i'm sure so, you'll pack the auditorium i just need a caveat i don't want people to think i'm boozing while i'm chatting this is alcohol free beer so that's fine oh that's fair enough we yeah, good yeah we believe we good. okay yeah, so good. um gosh um, oh yes sorry to book for the convention um if anybody contacts me direct i'll send them a link to the booking site but if you look for my web page uh, sorry well my my website stroke blog it's starlight hyphen nights um dot co dot uk starlight-nights.co.uk and there's a link on there to the convention and that's where you find out a little bit more about it and it's where you book your seats mm -hmm. and um i mean starlight nights seems to have become a bit of a trademark for me in that i was looking for the name for my website and i thought i'll try starlight nights it's so obvious it must have gone but it hadn't it was free and so now the facebook group and everything is called starlight nights and the name I got from Leslie Peltier's book, and if anybody um, wants to put something on their Christmas list, apart from the yearbook of astronomy, of course, that's a cert, but Leslie Peltier's book, Starlight Nights, um, it's an absolutely beautiful book. So, yeah, so oh, there you that's go. that's so sweet, Brian. Well, oh, yes. to rescuing an institution, and it looks like you've given Eddie a name, which I thought was yeah. a great name for him. Brilliant. And David Graham has asked, do the monthly notes still give diagrams showing the movements of the planets? Yes, they do. Um, they are detailed within the text and all the major planets have their own Mercury and Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus. It's not Uranus, it's Uranus and Neptune all have their own finder charts in colour for the year. So that's in every yearbook. So the answer to David's question is yes. Um, and I can guarantee that if anybody <laughs> buys the yearbook, they will not be disappointed period end of period there excellent there you go it's been great to have you on thank you so much for coming on the show and we'll probably book you back for this time next year yeah oh anytime whatever uh, is this a weekly show it sure is yeah i mean uh by all means send a link and i shall um well join in as it Just, were. Well, the way to if you've enjoyed the show, the way to watch us is: Are you on Facebook or would YouTube be more of your prime viewing? Um, yeah, well, this method seems to work, and I must admit, I've I've joined in not many, but with Zoom presentations and Zoom chat, and the clarity of this and the quality just seems a lot better. That's because it costs a fortune. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, there you go. Right. <laughs> well, it costs so a, for, a small class. fortune, a very small fortune. Right, okay. It has been a pleasure. Yeah, it's beautiful interactive software. That's what makes this show different. We have got interactive software, which helps with audience engagement. The audience love it because with Zoom, it's you're kind of just talking off into a void. But with this beautiful software, we can say, thanks, thank you. I will be placing an order. I have Excellent. a copy of Leslie's book. There, there you go. go. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah. This is so. far better than Zoom. Flat, dull, grey Zoom webinars. There's something about Zoom is it's quite grey and grainy, but this is this is the HD, baby. It's HD. Yeah, yeah. It makes me feel like I've got a better quality computer as well, which I probably <laughs> haven't, but it just makes it look better. So, there, there we go. go. There we go. Uh, it's a glossy chat show. I'll see you later. Yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll stay on for a bit anyway, listening. Oh, yeah, we've got, about Mac so. we've got Mac Astro and um, a sloth co coming later. 
I won't ask what that was. Anyway, there we go. So What? More like who? That's Cosmo, but he's coming on later. Oh, fair enough. Right. Catch anyway, you later, Brian. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Uh, done that back to front. It's me, not him. <laughs> There's so many buttons to press on. Oh, look, I've got hair on him. I forgot I had a hair on my hat. He's got a hair on his helmet. Um, I like hairs. After astronomy, I like hairs most. Um, okay. So you might have noticed earlier that we had lots of comments about this week's ma months, by months magazine. Now, let me see if I got the... Um, I feel like I'm doing some very bizarre child's TV show now. Okay, did I write it down? I'm just looking here. Somebody sent a lovely comment. Um, I think it might have been Jim Roberts I got an email from. I'm sorry, I've not cut and pasted your name into it, Jim. Um, only available to members. Sign up today and get your copy of the magazine. More astronomy, less adverts. This particular... Robin, this is a masterpiece. Get out of the way, Eddie. I'm going to have to just do a double page spread here for a minute. This is the beautiful magazine that comes as you, with your membership of the SPA. It arrives in your letterbox every two months. And if like me, I'm going to see how many people I can upset with this jape. That <laughs> There's no way. I, I lied about who I was. I forged my own identity. I can't, I can't see it to see whether you... There you go. <laughs> So I get a jape every two months addressed to Prof Professor Vicky Duncalf, but that's all right because I've done the same with my Viz subscription. The only two magazines I subscribe for. You can tell a lot about a girl with her from her magazine subscriptions, Viz and Popular Astronomy. My Viz subscription comes to Lady Victoria Duncalf. I'll have you know. So they, at least they think it's a classy, a classy refined lady who subscribes to their. They're smut. Let's have a look. Love hares and rabbits. They are the best. What are the um? What's the group that they're from? Legomorphs. Great salesman. Amazon. As soon as we're done. Yeah, it was a great chat. Hi, Adrian. How are you? Got my mag on. Oh yeah, we're talking about the magazine before I distracted myself and then redistracted myself. This is a beautiful magazine. Look, it's got. What would it be like if there was no moon? Beautiful young stargazers. We've got um, a great, we've got Tom Bowles' book plug there, which is lovely. The Astrocomical Mugs. It's just a beautiful magazine. Look how much look. Wow, I've not even read it. From Cave Art to Hubble, Our Big Neighbour. This is a this is a really lavish magazine. This is a really lavish magazine this week. I'm dog-earing it as we speak. How to use binoculars. Amazing. A trio of women astronomers. That's as far as I got today. That's a beautiful article. Like a bit of diversity. Members of Bridge End Astronomical Society there. There's a lot going on in this magazine. We've had, Wow. Starry snacks of black holes. Dash cams aid in daylight. Fireball recovery. You see, it's just a wonderful, wonderful magazine. Wow. This is a really good magazine. First light optics on the back there. Right. I could just sit here and read this and you lot can just talk amongst yourselves. Right, okay. Forging onwards into the next dimension of... I, I, I am a lady and she'll be an honorary professor and popular astronomy is excellent. Yes, thank you so much. Um, thank you. It's really nice to see some lovely comments taking place, people bonding and helping each other out in the chat room. It's really good. Come back, Eddie. All is forgiven. Always a very good magazine. Thank you, beautiful Samantha. Are oh, you Eddie? Eddie really suits him. Eddie Stone. What was it? Eddie Rock, Paper, Scissors, Stone? <laughs> That's a great name for him. Eddie Rock, Paper, Scissors, Stone. It's always rock. It's the only one he knows. Going to have to teach you some more rules to that game, Eddie. Okay. We are now going to go over to Popular Astronomy. Not Popular Astronomy. Mac Astro. Um... This, I, I've been a, a part-time member a couple of times to Mac Astro. It was really far away from where I was living in Cheshire. And the reason I became um, a member was so I could go on one of their amazing social occasions over to Anglesey, which, of course, because of COVID, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm not, I'm a lapsed member of Mac Astro, but I'm very fond of Mac Astro. 
um, it's just a shame it's a 40 mile drive away from where I used to live in Cheshire. So we are now going to go over to two, not one, but two, count them, one, two, that's two fingers held high. Two fingers, um, two members of Mac Astro, we've got Martin Butcher, I do believe that King Hi. Martin Butcher of oh, Mac Astro, how are you Martin? Very well, Vicky. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're sounding and looking great. I'm wondering if the last time I saw you was at the, oh, it would have been the Alan Chapman lecture if you were there. It probably was, yes. <laughs> yeah, that seems when? so long ago now. His, the, his, the slideshow did automatic updates in the middle of his presentation. Technology. Don't you just love it? Uh, probably more of a reason for him to despise technology. He's not, he's not keen fan i must admit but, um, when, when, anyway. when when your microsoft this and it was a giant um screen behind him as well and it just automatic updates installing and the poor guy had to wing it i think that was the last time i saw you when would that have been 2019 uh 2020 higher lower it, it would be in the beginning of 2020 yeah Oh, excellent, excellent. So how are you keeping anyway? Tell us a little bit about Mac Astro, Martin. Well, we, we, we're doing all right. Um, obviously, we've been just on Zoom for the last, seems like years, which well, is years. Um, but we're actually meeting more often, not less. Uh, we've, we've started meeting face to face again. So we just had our AGM face to face or hybrid at least. And our first workshop was um, face to face. So we're actually meeting almost every week. Unfortunately, on a Tuesday, so we sort of bit clash with your presentations. Um, uh, we're going to meet you tonight no as well. One, is that, I think, probably why no one from Macastro has ever appeared in the chat room? Well, ho ho hopefully Macastro people are coming to Macastro meetings. <laughs> but, yeah, that could be something to do with it. Yeah. Uh, so, right. So on the first Tuesday, we have our workshop. Ably led by Andy, Andy Verwer, who we put together some shorter talks from our, our members and friends. And then on the second Tuesday, we have our social, which would normally be in a pub, but for the last seems to be interminable period, we've obviously been meeting um, on, on Zoom. And then on the third Tuesday of the month, we have our lecture, which is a fantastic experience, really. We, we get some really good people, some of whom you won't have heard of because they're up and coming researchers. We, we track down and find out some of the you know latest research from some of the bright young minds and things. And then um, the fourth Tuesday of the month, which is this, we our workshops spawned us like a mini series called The Shed. And uh, so that's when people get together and discuss in more detail, sort of hands on how to use the latest um, bit of kit or what they're struggling with or sharp cap or latest software stacking system and try and figure out where all their megabytes and gigabytes are going. So that seems really, really popular. Uh, we've, we've actually restarted the Ligui trips as well. So we had our first Ligui trip back in beginning of um, September. So I'm going to bring Liz on in a moment. I'm going to give yeah, you a little yeah. bit, bit of background about the Cligwee trips. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't. How did I end up going on them? Um, because I know Malk, that's why. Um, yep, um, that, that'll do it. Malk Beasley, I know you're watching. Um, just, just, so... just talking about Malk, Malk's actually uh, rerunning our sort of like a Mac intro and we, we're doing an actual GCSE astronomy course on Zoom at the moment, so a 10... It's meant to be 10 weeks course, but I think we're going up to Christmas. Unfortunately, it's sort of full now, but we're going to probably rerun that again. So the idea is we, we've managed to um, run some outreach events and got some new members on board and people to give them a, a more sort of um, systematic introduction to you know, the topic of astronomy. We were actually running that course and that's proven really popular. So Malk's doing that for us, but we're doing that on Thursday night just to be really different. Hey, excellent. So, yeah, the Cligwe is um, a dark skies area on Anglesey, which Mac Astro every couple of months goes to. And it's like dormitories and 
dark skies and communal eating, and it is very communal. Uh, it would have been <laughs> one person with COVID in there, and it would <laughs> would not have been good. So it's amazing to hear that it's gradually coming back into our calendars. And now I live so much closer, I could just call him for the night and eat all the food and do the quiz. Excellent. Okay, now I'm just going to put Liz on. Liz in three, two, one. I'm coming to you. Hi, Liz. Hi. Hey. Hey, Liz, we're, we're, we're well, well themed tonight, Liz. Oh, oh. yes. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, well, I've got me here. Oh, you've got the black hole. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to wear cosmic clothing, haven't you? Um, Absolutely. Liz, Liz, let's, uh, what's, what's, what's your name is Liz? Liz. <laughs> Liz, tell us how we how we know each other. How we know each other? Well, we know each other through Mac Astro. Yeah, I think that uh, for many, you you did a few videos for us, and you uh, interviewed some of our speakers, and yeah. yeah, and then you did your amazing quizzes on on our Ligui nights, which were brilliant. They oh, God, so yeah. Oh, it really rattled you astronomers with some of those quizzes. Speaking of which, we've got a short taster of that quiz just coming up very shortly, and you've got to answer five questions between you. No way. Oh, crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> I this had this, this wasn't in the brief. That. I didn't tell you because I didn't want to panic you. I didn't want to spook you. Yeah. They're easy. Well, it's I think near that time of year. It is, it is. So, um, Liz, we used to speak quite a bit about the amazing outreach schedule of schedule or schedule schedule of um, Macastro. So, talk to this is what you used to do so much of before lockdown. Yes. And we do uh, so little of since lockdown. Oh, I bet you're itching. <laughs> but we're getting, we're getting slowly, we're getting requests and slowly we're going to ease our way back in. So that's a good thing. Um, and we do anything that, well, with some minor uh, limitations, we do most things that people ask us to do. Um, so we come to scouts, clubs, schools, libraries. Um, there's a couple of places in Mac that we go, which are um, people who are sheltered in one way or another and but enjoy learning about astronomy um and really uh, there's so much expertise within the society that we have all bases covered so anybody out there who feels like they'd like to invite mac astro to come and do something exciting please do yeah so i mean it's a, you've got a large catchment area as well haven't you Yes, because people live all over. I mean, people live as far away as Wigan and some people live as far away as the Lake District. So we cover quite Guilty a lot. Guilty as of... charged. <laughs> That's you, isn't it, Martin? You did a hell of, hell of a schlep. That's a good word, well, isn't it? Well, we, we, our, our next door neighbours are basically a field of sheep. So once a week or a couple of times a month, going down to talk to all the nice people at Mac Astro seems quite a good trade. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, Liz, tell us yes. about what's on your, well, we know what's on your T-shirt, but you're in relative pro proximity to the dishiest dish of all. Yes, just been there yesterday, actually, Ooh. doing some volunteering with um, families who've, who've come in, going there for the half term, mm -hmm. which if you live anywhere near, I would highly recommend. There's a really good um, photography of the year exhibition outside, which is amazing. Um, and uh, we just had a lot of fun, and I bought a pair of binoculars. You bought a pair? Well, then you need to get the Popular Astronomy magazine. And um, I do. I was thinking that. It's got a lovely article in it, and also we're, we're a bunch of lovely people. If you thought Mac Astro was fun, wait till you meet the Popular Astronomers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so nice to see you, Liz. So uh, when's the next um, Anglesey trip, then? Well, if all goes well, it'll be December. Beginning of December. December. Are there any? Because so we, it's it, it's in this um, it's an old, very old school that is now like a guiding centre, isn't it? Yeah, correct. Yeah. And it dovetails with the Druids who go at a full moon and Mac Astro go on the new moon, and never the twain shall ever ever meet. 
<laughs> I'm going to hide in the cupboard one weekend when they're there just to see what they get up to. Do you really think that that's crazy? I've never seen a druid on Anglesey. It's meant to be their stronghold, but um, I don't even really that's know. That's where they very... originated. They've come, that's their home. Is it? Home of the yeah, yeah. It's right where you live. On holy, <laughs> you know, you keep a really low profile. Those druids do. They don't ever see any like druid meetings or um or even them waltzing around in fields in floaty garb. I've never seen them. Well, you have to go to the right places at the right times, Vicky. <laughs> yeah, because I, I I'm always sat inside in a bad mood when it's a full moon because I can't see any stars. <laughs> <laughs> on a serious <laughs> note, though, astronomy has been going on for so many thousands of years, and all these stone circles. Are a rich heritage of, you know, circles looking at the sky, uh, Cheshire, uh, Anglesey, and certainly up in Cumbria, we there's so many around the country. Mm. Yes. Do you have good standing stones in? Um, um, I nearly said crop circles. That's very much the wrong thing to say. Uh, do you have stone <laughs> circles in um, in um, the lake? Cumbria. Yeah, we, we we got the best one, which is Castlerigg up near Keswick. You stand there in the stone circle, just surrounded by all the mountains. Fantastic! Oh, so someone just put on the um, on the chat, you know, Jodrell Banks close to Macclesfield. It certainly is. I mean, it's where our sort of society was sort of uh, founded, and it's where our sort of DNA is, and we're really missing it. So in a normal year, we'd have done several star parties with them. No, I mean, other societies joining as well. We have Liverpool and Manchester and uh, East Cheshire and people like that, I think, joining on star parties. And um, that. But we also run our own star parties up at Teg's Nose Country Park with the East Cheshire Rangers and sort of ad hoc events. So we're really, 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 really missing doing that and interacting with the public. Obviously, we've we've done a few um, events on Zoom, so our, our beginners' evenings, and hopefully we'll do one of those again in the winter if we can't do it sort of physically. But that would be really good. Oh, yeah, Martin! Only... Yeah. Do 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 you um do you ever go to Anglesey, Martin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to Anglesey, so um, to uh, Lygui, but my my son's actually based in Minai Bridge, so um, oh. yeah. We, we we know Anglesey quite well. Excellent, excellent. Well, maybe we can reconvene if I can get a, a better rejoin Mac Astro. Sadly, for insurance purposes, you need to be a member to, to go on the field trips. But yeah, absolutely. Um, and a big love to Mr. Warbis as well. Um, okay. So now then, we have a little fun quiz. Oh dear. Five questions. Four of them are rock hard. One of them is crater or potato. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on. Okay, you're allowed to confer, um, and you've only got a femtosecond to answer each one. How many? A femtosecond. A second. That's not a lot of time. <laughs> That's not a lot of time. You need to answer it before I've said it, basically. Mm. Okay, what property of a telescope is a dynamometer or dynamo? Oh, I can't even read it. Dynamometer used to measure. Well, how long is this? <laughs> Dino so means power, what? so it must measure whether it's on or off. Yeah, what property of a telescope is a dynamometer used to measure? It's the exit pupil. Of course. Oh. Did you know that one? Sorry, wrong. I'll write the word wrong next to it so I know how to count it. <laughs> Which is the biggest of Jupiter's moons? Um, Ganymede. Well done, Martin. One point, so correct. You know, being a quiz master is very difficult when you're just writing it, trying to type it down. Which meteor shower occurs in April? Oh, Gordon Bennett, where's my wife when I need her? Not the Gordon Bennett's. No. In April? Um, you mean every year in April? Uh, every year. Every year in April. Uh, I've sat out watching this thing every April. <laughs> Um, it's not the Leonids. Oh. Does it start with L? Lyrids? No, you got it. Lyrid. Yeah, yeah, well done. Correct. Somewhere from the memory bank. 
Well done. Oh, <laughs> do, you, do you want to see the prize you're playing for? There's a fictitious leaderboard that I've not been keeping up to date, and somehow there's meant to be this is a prize. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, yes. I need a dozen of those when we go to the Cubs. They <laughs> love Uranus. <laughs> the planet with a stupid name that needs changing. Okay. In which constellation? So you got that right. In which constellation will you find the kids? Oh. Uh, Aries. Oh, no, no, no. Gemini. Gemini. Uh, Is that your final answer? Go on, Liz. I'll let you have a. a uh, we were just talking about this. Kids, kids, kids. The kids, famous kids. Steve Warbus gave a whole talk on it. And it's, yeah, he um, did, didn't he? He must have fallen asleep uh, in that bit. The one with Capella in it. Go on, Liz. And it's, 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 what's the one with it? It's, <laughs> it's Aries. No, it's one with oh. Capella in it. What's Capella in? Oh, my mind's just gone a blank. <laughs> <laughs> It's the, it shows, yeah. how, shows how often we haven't been doing our star parties, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. What's your final answer? Uh, the one with Capella in it. Um, it's <laughs> Origa. Origa, that's Or it, Dave. Of yeah. course it is. Sorry, yeah, Martin. That is exactly the one Steve did the talk on the other week. He did. Uh, he just gave a talk on it about two weeks yeah. ago. Um. And finally, crater or potato? Is it a crater or is it a potato? Okay. Um, this is by far Paul Sutherland's favourite feature. He frequently writes emails to me saying, the outstanding crater or potato. Like... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the potato. Oh, no, the crater or the potato is Satanta. 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 Is it a crater or is it a potato? A potato. What does Martin think? Well, I'll go with Liz. Who am I to disagree? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. It is a very high dry matter potato with extremely high resistance to foliage blight, tuber blight, gangrene and dry rot. It keeps very well in storage and its eating quality is excellent. All round culinary use with a flowery taste. Wow. Must get and a as it happens, I was in Pete's Eats today, in um, which is the the mountain climbers cafe in Clamberis, and I had the. It must have been a satanta. It was this amazing boulder of a potato with the most exquisite interior. It was quite simply phenomenal. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it made it a one of oh, it's been so lovely having you both on, and um, um. Please it's don't so tell Steve we you get all eager right. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom of the class for Martin and Liz. Oh, so do we win the mug? We got about two, two and a half, right? I don't frankly know the rules of my own quiz, and I don't know whether Robin will give you a mug or not. Um, oh. We have not got our heads together and thought about the mechanics of the quiz yet. It's... Um... <laughs> I, I think there's... The, they've all got the three... ever, Vicky. <laughs> I know. Well, do I look organized? Come on. Do I look like I know how to control a spreadsheet? Mm -hmm. I'm not going <laughs> to answer that one. <laughs> it's been beautiful having you both on. Thank you, Martin. Thank and, you. And you. Thank you. Thanks for inviting us. See you us. both later. Thank nice you for two timing. Bye. Thank you for two timing Mac Astro with Pop Astro. See you later. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I thought I could hear gas hitting. It's the laptop fans are spinning away because it's been such a hot show tonight. Thank you to Liz and Martin. Um, let's catch up with some of the comments here. Oh, my. Oh, Bob. Why? That's amazing. Bye, Martin and Liz. Bye, Martin and Liz. King Edward. He was a king. He was also a potato. Um, okay, right. This thing's been out in the garden for a couple of weeks. It is dusty and dirty, but you see, Eddie, what's he called? Rock steady Eddie, scissors, paper, stone. Rock steady Eddie, scissors. What's it called? Rock steady Eddie, scissors, paper, stone. Always rock. Rock on, Eddie. Okay, guess who's come to see you? More bonkers. 
Where's his little song? Oh, um, where's his song? Oh, dear. Countdown. No, no, no. Oh, gosh, Cosmos, where's your song gone? There he is. He's been flying around the solar system or maybe a bit further. But to the casual observer, he's a mithering, pestering sloth. Where have you been to this week, Cosmo? Cosmo, where have you been? Three clues. Only answer after the clues. Cosmo over and out. I've just realised I've not made a song for ages. Do you know why? That is because work is picking up again. And um, I'm a video blogger. That's my bee's knees. And um, I've got assignments. So it means I'm not spending quite as much time sat at home looking at my computer going, where's all my work gone to? Uh, and um, that's why I've not been making as much music. Life has got busy again. Yes, bring it on. So Pop Astro Live doesn't have as many catchy songs anymore, but my bank account is heading in the correct direction. Let's put it like that. That's great news. Okay. So if you're new to this, Cosmo, I don't think Rocksteady Eddie and Cosmo should share the same screen together. Cosmo is star of the show. There we go. He's a little screen diva. He needs, it's built into his contract that he gets a quarter of a second of the screen to himself. Cosmo is our space traveling sloth. He lives on my telescope like that. And every Tuesday night, he comes over to give us clues about where he has been in the solar system or maybe a bit further. Okay. Good for you, Vicky. Yeah, thank you. God. Yeah. Do you know, hell my nerve, hell my nerve, hell my nerve. That is all I'll say. I have, I have done remarkable things with myself in the past couple of years uh, about focusing on the kind of business I want to have, i.e. space clients, and holding my nerve. Thanks to everybody who helped me hold my nerve because it's been an endeavor for my friends and family. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Uh, Cosmo, where have you been? Cosmo, we've not written, the, you have not written the clues out right here. Why is this in a, oh, hang on, yeah. Here's the first clue. I just rewound my script too far. There we go. What are you doing going backwards, Cosmo? That's clue number one. Clue number two, this thing where Cosmo was, was discovered on October the 10th, 1846 by British astronomer William Lassell, just 17 days after its parent planet, oh, I've given some of it away, was discovered. You're out of sync on my screen. Everything but the kitchen sink. Uh, laggy internet, probably. Okay, so this place where Cosmo has been was discovered just 17 days after its planet was discovered in 1846 by British astronomer William Lassell. And astronomers think that this thing was or is, is or was Cosmo, what do you think? Is or was a Kuiper Belt object? Where has Cosmo been? I think the main clue there is Cosmo's going backwards. Right, popular astronomers, has anyone answered correctly yet? That mangled set of clues that I didn't type out properly. What do you think, Cosmo? Where have you been? Oh, we're getting the correct answers already coming in. Um... Brian, I'm just getting your messages here in the chat room. Um, how do I send messages to appear on screen? Oh, you've got to be watching through on Facebook, Brian. I can't show them in the private chat room. Many thanks. I'll try to get others to join in the program. Uh, yeah, every Tuesday night, 8 p.m., we are here on YouTube and Facebook. You've just got to like the Pop Astro channels. Oh, Karen, Sharon, Sharon. Oh, we're getting some good wrong answers, though. I like your thinkings, popular astronomers. Jim Roberts says Pluto, Nereid. That's one of the bigger asteroids, is it? Uh, my connection with Sir Bernard Lovell is this is the wrong answer, John. Cosmo has not been to my connection with Sir Bernard Lovell. He's going in his office one weekend when he was not there to use his copy of the Astronomical Almanac. I was there on a weekend course. It's the wrong answer. 
Ian. Sharon. Right. I'm going to read the correct answers out. Oh, I've been on for an hour. I can go now. Right. He's been to Triton. It's the largest natural satellite of the planet Neptune and was the first Neptunian moon to be discovered. It is the only moon in the solar system with a retrograde orbit. Maybe I could do... I've got a rotating chair. I could go in retrograde. Don't normally have rotation. A retrograde orbit, an orbit in the direction opposite to its planet's rotation. So there we go. Well done. The first correct answer was David Graham. He's been star of the show tonight, not only coming from Yorkshire, but getting the answer correct. Have to go, Vic. Sorry. York. <laughs> yeah. Close enough. Close enough. Popular astronomers. It has been a delight to have you. That was a lively, colourful show, wasn't it? Um, I can't do a spreadsheet. I can't even draw a box on a spreadsheet. I can't. Spreadsheet lessons pass me by at school, but I can wear a banging 1980s tracksuit and lark about with a sloth. That's what's on my CV. And thank you, Brian Jones, for naming Rocksteady Eddie, because I just love him. He just looks great with that hat. Somebody needs to make the heads on Easter Island. Um, you can buy these in Home Bargain for like 12 quid. I can't believe it. Um, somebody needs to put some hat wear on the hats of Easter Island. Thank you very much. Thank you. It sold a lot of books. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to go in about two minutes. So David Deegan was first. Ah, oh, think should we let them have a tie? I think we'll let them draw. Thank you, Bob. That's so kind of you. Yeah. Have we got guests for next week? Let's check the phone. There is a spreadsheet, but spreadsheets. Let's have a look. I might be guestless. We should have had Eleni this week, but she's in Greece with Bobbin's internet. November the 2nd, we're back. Can you read that? Hopefully, we'll have wonderful Eleni back. Um, we're still fishing around for a main guest. If you've got any suggestions, please suggest a way to us. Thank you, everybody. Oh, thanks, everybody. Thank you, thank you for all your lovely comments. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Robin. And this beautiful magazine, if you join, I guess you'll get this, this by month's copy of it, Recording the Heavens. Beautiful. Lucy Green. Lucy Green. She's very relevant. She's a... Chief Junior Stargazer. Cheers. Thanks for the fun. I have given Neri does an answer quiz and been wrong twice now. Just one day you'll get that answer correct. All right. Love you all loads. I'm going to go now. Please share the stream. Please, please, please share it right now. If you've seen this video um, more than three times, please consider becoming a member of the SPA. It would help us greatly. Uh, Lots of love from me, Cosmo and Eddie and all our guests and all the contributors in the chat room. See you all, Susan.